Welcome to 144,000 Teachers, the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. In agenda for day six, we study parasitology, the uninvited guest. Reading from Numbers 1317, file number 11. He said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I commanded thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee, until he have consumed thee from off the land, whether thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption, and with a fever, and with an inflammation, and with an extreme burning, and with the sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thy perish. Here we have in these studies here of the word of God, words such as pestilence. Many people do not know that this word refers to pandemics. The rest of the wording we have already looked into previous to another study called None of These Diseases. Now, as we go to the next page of this file number 11, you find a very important study, which is right here among others, and it's the study on parasite, the uninvited guest. Are you having difficulty shaking off an illness? Are you suffering from chronic fatigue? Do you have a health problem your doctor cannot identify? Parasites in your body may be the cause. Many people think that parasitic diseases happen only to people in third world countries. The rate of parasitic related disorders in North America is skyrocketing. An astounding one out of six people will test positive for parasite. One out of six people. Is there anything you can do to protect yourself and your family from this very real epidemic or pandemic? Yes, there is. Following is an easy to understand guide that gives you the information you need to guard against these unwelcome organisms. It explains what parasites are, why they are harmful, and how they are spread. The symptoms of parasitic diseases symptoms are easily confused with other common health disorders and treatment are available to combat parasites with practical advice on how to parasite proof your diet and your lifestyle. Now keep in mind, this is a fairly large study. We will not be reading every paragraph presented here. This is why we give you the link for your perusal. And we really, really want to emphasize the importance of studying this parasitology. It's a science regarding fungus and parasite, which many people, including the medical field, ignore. And of late, it has been discovered that even Crohn disease, which is a very, very complicated and painful disease of the colon, is related to parasites. And yet there are simple ways of cleansing from parasites, which people have learned in the past, has been forgotten, and now need to be learned again. For many people, the topic of parasites is offensive, but ignoring the problem will not make it go away. The growing threat of parasitic disease is real, is dangerous, and is here. Becoming intelligent about this subject allows to take an important first step in defending the body from this hidden epidemic. We have a tremendous parasite problem right here in the United States. It's just not being identified. 
I strongly believe that every patient with disorders of human junction, including multiple allergies, especially food allergy, and patients with unexplained fatigue or with chronic bowel symptoms should be evaluated for the presence of intestinal parasites. So we do have doctors who do acknowledge the validity of the problem with parasites. And these are dating from 1991, 1988, and even 1974. And yet we still have this problem today. Make no mistake about it. Worms are the most toxic agents in the human body. They are one of the primary underlying causes of disease and are the most basic cause of a compromised immune system. Of late, even a person known to the speaker right now was diagnosed with cancer. And after doing a cleanse with castor oil and changing certain habits of her lifestyle, she's now free from that so-called cancer, which was actually a parasite. New diseases, old problems. American today are host to more than 130 kinds of parasites ranging from microscopic organism to foot long tapeworms. Practically every imaginable kind of exotic parasitic disease has been found on our shores. African sleeping sickness, toxoplasmosis, cyclotosomiasis, gyrodiasis, amebiasis, filariasis, unpronounceable to most of us, but potentially deadly nevertheless. Even malaria is making a comeback, with cases of this mosquito-borne tropical disease being reported as close to homes as New Jersey, Virginia, Texas, and California. Parasites are insidious public threat, health threat in the United States today, and yet it is not acknowledged. Insidious because so very few people are talking about parasites, and even fewer people are listening. Insidious because the common misconception among physicians and the general public alike that parasites occur only in tropical third world countries, area traditionally associated with malnutrition, poor hygienic practices. Insidious because physicians do not suspect and therefore do not recognize classic symptoms. And insidious because even if physicians are aware of the trip, most used outdated and inadequate testing procedure, which result in under diagnosis. Parasitology, unknown pathology in America. Lack of education is to blame. In the United States, physicians are simply not educated in parasitology and are therefore inexperienced in recognizing common clinical symptoms. A doctor introduction to parasitology may come from a chapter here and there in a microbiology course in medical school. If parasitology itself is taught at all, it is as a speciality in the Department of Tropical Medicine at some universities. Courses in these departments are not often elected by medical students who believe they will not be seeing tropical medicine problems in their general practice in the United States. Yet time have changed and parasites are much more widespread than previously believed. An article appearing in the June 27, 1978, Miami Herald states that a nationwide survey conducted by the Centers for Disease Control in 1976, revealed that one in every six people selected at random had one or more parasites. And now this is 1978, with all the different traveling that there is the opening of borders that has happened since 1978, we're talking 40 years ago, we could probably bring that down to much more of a percentage than that. It's, it's It wouldn't be one in every six people. It would probably be five out of six. The survey also pinpointed a parasite known as Giardia lamblia as the number one culprit in waterborne disease. 
Lewis Parrish, medical doctor and New York City physician who specialized in parasites, wrote in 1991, based upon my experience, I estimate in the New York metropolitan area that 25% of the population is infected. Projection for the year 2025 suggests that more than half of the 8.3 billion people on Earth will then be infected with parasitic diseases, F. Um, I mean, 25% of that population and F of the 8.3 billion people. This is definitely an increase from 1991 and from 1978, and it could be even more prevalent than that. Now, how did it happen? A number of seemingly unrelated factors unique to the late 20th century have contributed to the unrestrained parasite epidemic and added to the increased risk of parasitic infection. Some of these factors include the rise in international travel, the contamination of municipal and rural water supplies, the increasing use of daycare centers, the influx of refugee and immigrant population from endemic areas, the return of armed forces from overseas, the continued popularity of household pets, the increasing popularity of exotic regional foods, the use of antibiotics and immunosuppressive drugs, the sexual revolution, the spread of AIDS. So here we have the reason why parasite or parasitic pandemic has so much increased. They call it epidemic, but a pandemic also is a, an approach to it that we could look at because it's all over the world. It's not just in one section of this world. Very, very important. And what are the warning signs? Unhappily, we won't have time to read the seven pages of this. These are the most important part, and then you can go on and studying further on your own. We pray and hope you will take time to do that. And this is talking about America, but it could apply to everywhere, uh, Europe, Asia, uh, Oceania, Africa. So it's not pinpointing only to a certain group. It's simply that the research has been done mainly here in America. Over half of all Americans will at some point in their lives become host to parasites, according to health experts. Since the effects of infection reach far beyond the gastrointestinal tract, it behoves us all to be on the alert for the wide array of bodily symptoms that signal the presence of parasites, which many people do not know what they are. Signs and symptoms may come about during initial exposure, shortly after that exposure or many months later and even years what many of us are attributing to old age stress or plain old poor health may in fact be due to uninvited guests the word parasite is from the greek words para meaning beside and cytos meaning food most medical dictionaries define a parasite as an animal or plant that lives on or in another organism from which it obtains nutriment. A basic element in the parasite definition is that a parasite is usually enduring or without contributing to survival. So it can kill you really. The relationship that is formed between the two organisms is defined as parasitism. The present study is based on endoparasites which lived inside the body rather than ectoparasites, which live on the body like mites and ticks. The organism that serves as the home for the parasites is known as the host. The transmitting agent that carries the infecting pathogen is called a vector. Kind of interesting wording, rather than saying you're infected with parasite, you're a vector or you're a host. The human being becomes a host through one or four Path of, of four pathways, one of four. The first is infected food or water. The sources of roundworm, Amoebia regiardia. The second is via a vector, such as a mosquito, which can be carrier of dog, earthworm, filaria, and malaria. A flea, carrier of dog, tapeworm. The common house fly, transmit amoebic cyst and the sandfly, carrier of leishmaniasis. 
The third is from sexual contact. Infected partners can transmit trichomonas, giardia, and amoeba. The fourth is through the nose and skin. Pinworm eggs and toxoplasma gondi can be inhaled from contaminated dust, hookworms, schistosomes, and strong gilloids can penetrate exposed skin and bare feet. The airplane can be considered another parasitic pathway or vector in its own right because extensive foreign travel has exposed people to a whole gamut of exotic diseases never before encountered in their own land. And for in-depth study of types of parasites referred to reference at the end. It is important to identify the parasite size, site in host, portal of entry, source of infection, most common symptoms, laboratory diagnose, therapeutic agents to see that practically every part of the human body can be affected by parasites. Most invaders inhabit the gastrointestinal tract, mainly the small intestine, but also the colon, with the circulatory system, blood and lymph, following close behind. During the adolescent, of or larva stages of the migratory life cycle, many organisms can invade the lungs. And organs like the heart, liver, spleen, eyes and brain are not immune from the damaging effects. So you can see the point that was presented at the beginning that parasite can actually show the same symptoms as other diseases from different organs because parasitology is not recognized officially or because the doctors do not have any knowledge that it even exists and that happens or even practitioner practitioners while many of our unexpected visitors may be invisible their symptoms can be very apparent in this situation the all the age out of sight out of mind definitely does not apply the warning signs for parasite are also symptoms of other common illnesses for this reason, parasitic infections are often misdiagnosed and ensuing treatment does not result in the alleviation of symptoms or disease. When symptoms continue even after a course of treatment, parasite screening procedures should be initiated. The following are warning signs for parasites, constipation, diarrhea, gas and bloating, irritable bowel syndrome, joint and muscle aches and pains, anemia, allergy, skin conditions, granulomas, nervousness, sleep disturbances, teeth grinding, chronic fatigue, and immune dysfunction. Again, we put here Crohn's disease as well, and even lupus, fibromyalgia. These lifestyle disease should be looked to into the fact that it could be simply caused by parasite. Basically, parasites create damage to the host body in six ways. They destroy cells in the body faster than cells can be regenerated, thereby creating an imbalance that results in ulceration, perforation, or anemia. They produce toxic substances that are harmful to the body, and in cases of chronic infection, the body's immune response can be pushed into overdrive, producing elevated levels of eosinophils. Eosinophils are specialized white cells that normally combat any microscopic pathogen, but when their level is elevated, they themselves can cause tissue damage that results in pain and inflammation. The presence of parasites irritates the tissues of the body, inducing an inflammatory reaction on the part of the host. Some parasites invade the body by penetrating the skin, producing dermatitis, during their developmental stage, other parasites perforate and damage the intestinal lining. The size and or weight of the parasitic cysts, particularly if they are located in the brain, spinal cord, eye, heart, or bones, produces pressure effects on these organs. Obstruction, particularly of the intestine and pancreatic and bile ducts, can also occur. The presence of parasites depressed human system functioning while activating the immune response. 
This can eventually lead to immune system exhaustion. And beside that, we will add two more. One is depression. And two, it can also cause the loss of air. This is one sign of parasite when you lose hair by patches. That's really a sign to look into. And of course, on Apile, cancer have been diagnosed instead of parasites eating away your body and people have operation and surgery done, which does not solve the problem as I've been just mentioned, if it's not diagnosed properly. Not every case of little health can be blamed on parasite, but if symptoms persist and reoccur at regular intervals after a person has been treated for some other diagnosed ailment, then parasites should be suspected. It is a good idea to keep track of the symptoms and look into the parasite connection with the assistance of an experienced healthcare provider. This particular client that uh, was spoken of was actually diagnosed with uh, cancer of the intestines because of a loss of blood. Her hemoglobin was very low and they feared that she was losing blood somewhere but they could not find out where. And after finding out in a very, very interesting article, a scientific article in 2022, written in actually, uh, presented actually by microbiologists from the University of British Columbia, who now acknowledge that parasite or fungus can actually produce the loss of blood in the hemoglobin by sucking out literally the iron from the blood. So when people are diagnosed with the loss of blood because of low hemoglobins count, it could be actually produced by parasites. And this particular client um, was presented with this fact and she followed the procedure or the protocol that was given to her. And now we can declare that she is definitely free from that cancer so-called because even after a few occurrence with the hospital and the medical field they could not find out in the intestine where that blood was being lost because there was no loss of blood per se so it was simply because of the parasite that were literally as we said sucking out the iron from the hemoglobin bringing down the count and then after cleansing for about two, three weeks, especially with um, castor oil, which is a very potent cleanser, better than anything else found on the market. And this person now is free from these terrible uninvited guests. And it was not only a parasite, it was also fungus. Having lived in a house that was not uh, heated properly, a new house that was not heated properly and fully um, completed. So the fungus came into the house because of the cold season and uh, humidity set in and this person definitely got sick from those fungus. So fungus, parasites, and also as mentioned, they could be microscopic, but it also could be macroscopic. Microscopy means you need a microscope to determine if they're parasite, but macroscopy is you can see them. Just like we mentioned, the tapeworms and all these uninvited guests can come out. And if they're being cleansed properly, it's kind of scary for some people, but with castor oil and charcoal, after a few treatment, do not be worried and scared as practitioner if these uninvited guests come out and they will come out through the nose, to the mouth and to the regular elimination system, the digestive system. Here we're going to look at, again, we could read the whole procedure because it's so interesting, but you will see that the more you read, the more you will agree that this is definitely a logical conclusion to this study, that water and food connection should be the first one looked into. And as I said, we will spare you now this reading because it's pretty lengthy, but we do encourage you to read it. If the words are a little bit big, well, they're Latin, Latin word and they're a bit hard to pronounce, but just bypass it and read the explanation and don't give up until you have read it all. Again, it's mentioned here the kind of um, parasite that a person can have specifically with drinking water 
that is not filtered, that is not clean. And also because of nutrition, poor nutrition, especially for people who are vegan, uh, as myself, we need to wash the vegetable and the food that we eat very thoroughly, the lettuce, because we can actually have parasite in there that we cannot see. And just because we think it's healthy to be vegan, it can also make us very sick if we do not know how to detect the parasite. So here is a question, questions and uh, that you need to give the answer, a questionnaire, for you to figure out if you have parasite and nobody can detect your symptoms and you can contact us in our email at the end of our presentation. Uh, when you've seen those things, you can go to 144,000 teachers in the contact section and contact us to that um, email. And uh, you will see that we can answer your question as well. For example, if you have traveled, that could be a cause of having parasites. Some people travel extensively and they need to keep a good clan, clan program procedure so that they do not uh, continue with those parasites in their body and get sicker. Water also is very important. Is your water clean? Is it close to a cemetery? Is it close to some lake or streams that are not drinkable? Even if you have a well, they will be affected by it. Or if you go hiking on camping trips, and you don't boil your water or live in an area where the water is not secured. And this can be in the city too. It's not just in, in, in the it's not just in a third world country. Water in America is um, cleaned by the cities, but they're cleaned with chemical. And there are certain parasite or even antibiotics that will never be cleansed by these fill this uh, chemicals. So here we have it. So please take time to read this. The food that you eat very much can be full of uninvited guests. Specifically, we're talking here smoke or pickle food, sausage, pork. These are full of trichinosa. Trichinosa is a parasite and it's very difficult. You can burn the pork dead, like totally black. And yet trichinosa will come back in a Petri dish the next day. If you put a sample of it in a Petri dish and leave it for 24 hours, you will see the worms are back. It's very hard to kill trichinosa and get rid of it. So raw fish as well is like sushi, sashimi. All of these Latin American or Dutch uh, serve fish. You do not want to eat those. Absolutely not. They are full of parasites. Raw meat as well. Some people now, they're into raw meat more than ever. They used to, but even more than ever now. And also cutting boards for chicken, fish, meat. These can be actually infected by parasite, especially if you uh, use the same cutting board for your vegetable or fruit. Now, sushi, where we said here, uh, there are fish that definitely carry a lot of parasites. Pets also are very dangerous in a way. People love pets. They sleep with them. They let their babies sleep with the pets. It's extremely dangerous. These animals are at the level of the soil. They go outside. They carry. They can carry ticks. They can carry, actually, a lot of worms. And the disease of the animal can be transferred to human being. In the 1990s, this, in the 1980s, this was not believed to be so, but the 1990s to 2020 now, it can be demonstrated that you can actually contact the disease of the animals, the carriers. Even cancer of animals. If you let the, the dog to lick your face, you will be surprised that you could get cancer of the skin just because of the licking of that animal. Babies should never be touched by animals. They should never be licked by animal because that also can um, bring disease upon them. Their skin is very sensitive. Workplace, hospital, pet shop, zoo, experimental laboratories or veterinary clinic. Many people work in those places, daycare centers, garden or work yard where cats and dogs have access. Uh, if you work in sanitation places, you can see there that you could easily easily uh, have some uninvited guests and you may not even know why. 
Now, do you engage in oral sex? Many people think that this is okay, and uh, this is actually um, very dangerous. Absolutely dangerous. It not only it's not natural; it's extremely unclean practices. Oral sex and anal sex should never be practiced, even if it's just at the level of cleanliness. Beside being bestiality that the Bible talks about, it's absolutely bestiality. Now. We continue with the major symptom. You can read here in adult. We give you all the symptoms if you want to see them. We will not take time to read them all. There's so many, and yet people think that they can run to the doctor and the doctor will find a problem, and yet they do not ask things like, uh, what do you eat, where have you been, and things like that. Do you grind your teeth? That could be a symptom. Insomnia, depression, moodiness, sugar craving, lethargy, disorientation, that could all be reason for cleaning up for parasite. Now, many people will say, well, we're going to become kind of crazy about this. Well, remember the good old days during the COVID-19 where they cleanse everything, like uh, the place was so filthy? Airport, everywhere, churches, everywhere had to be very cleansed. And then when you enter the store, everywhere you had to clean your hand with those chemicals. Wear a mask. Well, Guess what? Parasites should be treated the same way. Parasite, we should be much more careful than we are with them, especially with the number of uh, pets that have entered into the homes now. And they're everywhere. And um, in the house, on the couch, everywhere. And this is one reason why we should avoid having animals that lives in the home. Animals were never meant to live in the home with human beings. All right, so again, children with dark circles under the eyes, if hyperactivity, that could be a symptom of parasite. Don't think right away ADD, HDAD, and all those acronyms and put them on medication. Give them castor oil, for goodness sake. Give them charcoal. It's not going to kill them. It's going to cleanse them, and they're going to come back really calm. Also, failure to thrive. Grinding, clenching the teeth at night. Picking their nose or scratching is behind having a habit of eating dirt wetting the bed being restless at night these are all symptoms you could look, look into look at this one do your child tear his hair out there was a client they had been to a country to be teachers and when they came back to america their daughter was losing losing her hair by patches she was 12 years old and because I am a practitioner of um, parasitology, besides being a massage therapist, I'm a certified massage therapist. I was able to tell that client, she has probably a parasite. She needs to be cleansed. What do you do? What do you do? Charcoal and castor oil. And we can give you some advice, depending on the age of the people. You, you can do castor oil very easily. The best one is black seed Jamaican castor oil, but you can find any castor oil on the market. But please don't go to the pharmacy because it has been filtered with chemicals. Castor oil should never be white. When it's white clear, it's not the natural one. The natural one, like the black seed uh, castor oil from Jamaica, is absolutely dark brown. And don't try to filter it, just drink it. And if you don't like the taste of it, take it with orange juice or some kind of a juice after. And uh, the taste is not that bad when you get accustomed to. Better a bad taste than having parasites, correct? All right. If a child has a limp, that orthopedic treatment has not helped, could have parasite. So many things. Coughing. People have coughing constantly. That could be simply parasite. Confusion. Abnormal electroencephalogram. Recurring headaches. Here you have, like sensitive to light. So many, so many reasons. And also bleeding of the gums, the rectum, or the nose. That could be parasite. All right? So, and even the infants, they have colics. That could be parasite. And if they bang their head against the crib, that could be parasite. I'm not saying this is all that, but what else do you have to lose? If the doctor cannot find anything, you might as well try to go to the basic of it. And if they cry constantly, and if they have blotchy rash around the perineal area, that's also a sign of parasite. You can even check parasite in a child, in a baby at night, 
while he's sleeping, you can lift up the child's where he's lying and with a flashlight, so you don't wake him up, you could see worms on the bed and that comes from the baby. Don't panic, you just have to cleanse that child. And even little babies can take small uh, portion of charcoal and small portion of castor oil, but you need to follow certain directions. So as we said, you're more than welcome to contact us and you will see that this will help tremendously to improve your health and the health of children, especially if you are teachers and you have children that are very, very um, distractive, distracting, you know for sure that these children may have um, a problem, but it may not be, as we say, ADD and HDAD, it may be simply parasite. And doctors do not think about that. They rather like to put them on major medication and the children become even more hyper or very lethargic and you don't even recognize your children and they're drugged very young and then you wonder later on why they're drug addicts. All right, so if you have answered yes to more than 40 items, you are at high risk for parasitic infection. If you answer yes to 30 items, your risk for parasitic infection is moderate. If you answer yes for 20, you are at risk. If you're not exhibiting any overt symptoms now, remember that many parasitic infection can be dormant and then spring to life when you least expect them. Be aware that symptoms that come and go may still point to an underlying parasitic infection because of a reproductive cycles. The various development stages of parasites often produce a variety of metabolic toxins and mechanical irritations in several areas of the body and for example, pinworms can stimulate asthmatic attacks because of their movement in the upper respiratory tract. So now we have it all. And now if you go for the diagnosis and the clinical test, we're just leaving them to you here and the treatment. The treatment that we have found so far being the best is definitely charcoal and castor oil, good old castor oil. It works miracles miracles so this is not our writing but we do recommend you to read it because it's definitely um, the solution to many of the problem that have not been diagnosed properly or are not diagnosed at all and here is the way you recover is by cleansing the intestinal tract modifying the diet administrating effective substance to eliminate the parasite charcoal and castor oil. We recommend both together. And recolonizing the gastrointestinal tract with friendly bacteria. So that's why after you have been doing the cleansing, what it means simply is you need acidophilus, which can be obtained in a natural health food store. Please avoid as much as possible chemical. Try the health natural product first. And if everything fails, well, don't wait until you're dead or the person is dead when not being extreme here, but it can happen, go to the doctor. But if you feel that right now these symptoms are what you see, you don't have anything to lose to try those. And of course, if you're on many ghettos of medications, it's not recommended because you will counteract the work of the megadose medication. Eliminating parasite risk factor from lifestyle and environment to avoid reinfection is not what we read at the beginning. What the Lord says, none of this disease among us that was also among the Egyptians. And Egyptians at the times meant simply, it was not just the country of Egypt. It was because at the time that it was written with Moses being the writer and the creator himself being the, the basically the inspirer, it was because Moses was in Egypt when that was written. And Egypt was the country, the conqueror of at that era. So we can say the same thing None of these diseases among you that are also in America or in Africa or in Oceania or in Europe or in Asia, we're going to name them all so we're covered. Success in treatment is predicated on a number of factors. To begin with, the length of time the patient has been infected and his basic overall health are keys in determining the length of time necessary to achieve successful results. Often time, repeated treatment are required for complete success, especially if the infection is not a long standing of a long standing nature patient cooperation 
as with treatment for any illness, is crucial. So this is where we're going to stop with the treatment of the protocol, and we continue here with the prevention and all kind of beautiful, um, definitely important ideas of uh, you know how to maintain from having parasites. And it will take us all day to read this. But listen, if you don't have the symptoms, don't worry. But if you do have symptoms and you have children that you are caring for and they have symptoms, you may want to talk to the parents about it. Tell them that you have the knowledge of this. It's called parasitology. And this could protect you, your family, and also be able to live a very healthy, healthy life. And we give you here the link or the books where this information were found. And this was written in 1993. And uh, practicing parasitology has been one of my practice after I have learned it. And I totally believe in it, totally see the value of it, along with all the other natural remedies that we teach at 144,000 teachers. May the Lord bless you and bring health upon you through obedience is the desire of our heart for you. I wish above all things that thy may prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospered. I wish above all things that thy may prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospered. I wish above all things that thy may prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. I could not resist this wonderful quote from the Word of God, from the book of John. May the Lord bless you and keep you in health is our prayer in our Savior's name. Hallelujah.